Hello, welcome to the Thoughtfully Made Fiber Podcast. My name is Amy and I am recording here on April 4th, 2021 here in Southern California with my family. Um, They are Roy, my partner, and my two kids, Clara and Kaylee. Uh, This is episode four. Um, I can also be found at Instagram if you'd like to connect there. My username is at Amy Shermakes, and I'll put a link below to that. Um, As always, this episode is fully captioned, and everything I'm talking about will be in the links below. I have so much to share with you today, (laughs) seriously so much. Um, I feel like I've really made progress um, since the last time I filmed. Uh, I was in such kind of like a really depressive mood for a while, but... I've been knitting just as part of my mindfulness practice and just working my way through it. And I found so many things inspiring lately that it really pushed me creatively to do new things that I haven't done before. So I'm really excited to share it all with you. So I've got my drink here, the Thai iced tea with boba and some things that will be related to that. It's a themed episode. So, um, oh, this tea is from Gong Cha. Is their logo. I was hoping it would come like not pre-mixed, but it did. Um, it kind of ruins my plans for this podcast. You'll see in a minute. But let's start with what I'm wearing. What I'm wearing is a little summer top by Layla Raven. It is um, part of the linen collections that she made with her former employer. Um, and I made it with the recommended yarn. So let me stand up so I can show you. It is a little cropped linen tee made in uh, fingering weight linen. It has this lace panel across the top that runs down the arms. Very pretty. Let me come over here so you can see it. Um, Let's see, what else? It is constructed center out like that. It is really nice little um, spring to summer tea and it's like 75 degrees out here in California today so it's basically the right season for wearing it. Um, I don't wear it a lot just because I find the linen kind of fussy to wear. Um, This company's linen biases a lot and I'm not sure if it's something that happens with all linen or just with this one but some alternatives that I would recommend for this yarn would be uh, Pearl Soho's Field Linen and Shibuya Reed would both be really nice options for this pattern. Um, I know Layla Raven, the designer, left Quince & Co. um, kind of on not great terms, so I would recommend using an alternate yarn for this pattern, but it's a great little one, and every summer I wear it and feel super fancy. So that is what I'm wearing today. So let's move on to some finished objects. And actually, I only have one. And it is this Dahlia sweater. I talked about it in my last podcast um, in which I talked about how I was struggling with the hem flipping. And as you can see, that's no longer a problem. Um, The pattern calls for the hem to be knit at, I think, US 2, and I ended up, or US 1 maybe, but I ended up knitting it at US 0 to get it to lay flat like that. And I was having trouble also with the sleeves. I was trying to do kind of a low waist um, knitting so, so that I can use up every bit of yarn and play an epic game of yarn chicken. And unfortunately, I did not complete the sweater with yarn chicken and the length of the sleeves that I reached with the yarn that I had was not super cute on the baby so um, I decided to keep going using a sock scrap using a fade technique so I just alternated the two yarns every other row until I ran out of the green yarn the green speckle and continue knitting as pattern directed in the blue speckle color until it was done and of course there's this um there's this really beautiful lace here. yeah there you go there's this really beautiful leaf lace pattern at the top 
um, which is so cute. I've knit this pattern three times already and I love it so much. Um, and for some reason when I thought of a spring pattern, the leafiness and the green yarn just spoke to me even though it is a Christmas yarn. Um, the yarn is by Woolberry Fiber Co. It is from a sock set called the North Pole Set and it's from their Christmas collection. And the blue yarn is also from their Christmas collection. I think I actually got these in the same collection. The blue sock is, um, this blue sock yarn is from also a sock set. It's called I Smell Snow. And this is just a bit of leftover scrap that I had from making actual socks with it, which I've also brought to show you. They're a little ratty because I've worn them quite a lot. But here are the socks. Um, these are the Vervang socks by Sachiko Virgin. Um, they have a gorgeous little lace panel that runs down the side. And they knit up in no time. It was really fun to knit. So it was really fun to keep going on the sleeves using this color. Um, I wasn't sure that the two colors would work together, but I think it turned out okay. So. Um, all it needs is a button, so it's not technically finished yet, but the knitting of it is done and all the ends are woven in. So there's that. I made it in size, let's see, I think this is size 24 month. Since um, Clara, my youngest, is in the 97th percentile for height, so she outgrows things really quickly. Um, she is 14 months soon and yeah, hopefully she'll be wearing this into the fall. So that's kind of my plan with this one. Um, I'm just about to pack away all of our deep winter things and keep out one or two fingering weight projects or um, finished objects for each family member, um, me and Kaylee and Clara. I don't really knit for Roy just because it's so t yarn intensive, but I think one day I will try to get to it. But for now, um, I'm going to do like a spring cleaning of all my sweaters. Um, I wonder if it's cold enough. I wonder if it's warm enough where you are to be doing that. Um, I'm kind of hesitating a bit because of certain plans we have. So um, I hope to be able to share more with you soon about my little cleaning project process. Um, I have another finished object, which I cannot show you today. Um, and that is a shawl, a secret test knit for Viber Tales, who is also here on YouTube. I will link her info information down below. It is a secret test knit and I finished it and it is on the blocking boards. So I'll insert some footage here of just me washing a shawl because um, I won't be able to show that one for a little bit. I think I showed a little bit of it last week, but I can't show the full shawl yet. So. There's that one and we'll just move right along. So um, I finished the camel and silk spin that I started a few episodes back now, I think, in my very first episode. I think this is what I was spinning. Actually, every episode that has had footage of me spinning has been this. And it is this beautiful skein here. This is about 96, 97 grams of camel and silk. It is baby camel quality. So, so soft and it has the most wonderful halo. Oh, I love it so much. Um, it took me a really long time, over a month to spin the singles and then it took me like a day to ply, which is usually the case for me. I'm very quick at plying and not so good at spinning singles. Um, this is a very, 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 very light fingering weight almost lace weight yarn and I basically um, pulled the braid in half making sure I started and ended at the same color repeat area so that I had two similar um, sections and it created the most beautiful gradient and I hope ooh, there we go let me get my face out of frame here so hopefully um, it'll become a shawl someday. I just need to pick a pattern. And because it's so shiny and halo-y and wonderful, I'm thinking about even um, 
doing some beadwork with it. I think that would be really beautiful. It's definitely a special occasion yarn, uh, a luxury yarn. So I had such a good time getting to know uh, the camel silk fiber base with this and yeah, it's really just inspired me to try different fibers. So that's my last finished object. Like I said, I've been very productive. I've done so much since we last talked. So um, let's see, what else are we doing? Let's move on to works in progress. The first one I have is another spinning project. Let me just grab it here. Okay, here is my, here is my first work in progress right here it is a bobbin full of this gorgeous yarn it is kind of a lace weight single it's destined to be kind of a fingering decay i don't know yet i don't know how it'll bloom but i'm hoping to make something lacy and beautiful with it the fibers are shetland and silk and it just has this most beautifully heathered and wonderful quality. I just think it's so nice. And this spun up in no time. I've been spinning it long draw from a pencil roving preparation. And hang on, I'll show you the fiber. This is the fiber I showed last time from Sharon, my friend on Instagram. And I basically split the pencil roving up by weight into I think 38 gram hunks since she sent me it says 70 grams each oh, sorry 70 grams of this fiber but I got 38 in each um, so this is the pencil roving let's see if we can get it to focus on the roving there we go it is so beautiful you can see the um, silk bit going through it and I find a spinning long draw in a true woolen style just so comfortable and so intuitive. It really happened in no time at all. And I had such a good time spinning up the first bobbin yesterday and I expect to finish the second bobbin today. My next work in progress is stored in this gorgeous Hikari handmade project bag that I talked about last time. Um, since I finished the Dahlia sweater, I wanted to start a new project. Um, and look what arrived. This is the beautiful um, Thai Ice Tea Gradient Set by 626 Yarns. Um, I've been so excited about this yarn ever since Jen told me that she was working on it. And she kindly sent me this set to give away for the Knit Diverse Knit Along. Um, and then she also threw in this dark boba colorway right here. I'm not gonna open it because it's taped shut so neatly and I don't want to mess it up for whoever receives it but I can show you the yarn also because she very kindly is also providing yarn support for my very first design which I can't wait to show you. So let me show you the yarns first. So the gradient set is supposed to represent or supposed to resemble a Thai iced tea just after it's been poured and in um, <laughs> when we used to eat out in restaurants here in California um, it would come with like this reddish bit brownish bit at the bottom that's full of tea concentrate and then the milk would be at the top and it would create these, this like kind of interesting gradient with layers in it that sometimes have sharp distinct layers and sometimes it's a gradient and Jen, who is local to me, has dyed up this gorgeous colorway. Ooh, I think I'm missing one. Am I missing one? <gasps> I'm missing one. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm missing one. That's okay. It's around here somewhere. I've already started knitting them, but here's what I have here. Ooh, it's so hard to hold them all. There we go. They're all wound up. I think I'm missing like the medium colorway and I used quite a lot of it so I hope I can find it because I still need to finish the second part of this um, and what I am knitting my first design is ta-da a Thai iced tea sock with boba um, it is a fade sock with some interesting 
color work bobble details. I won't talk too much about the details because I don't want to give it away. There we go. Focus, please. There we go. And from afar, it really does look like a jar of Thai iced tea, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, yeah, I can't wait to wear Thai iced tea on my feet. Um, for my feet to look like boba because it's just the most exciting thing ever and that is why I have some Thai iced tea with me today for foaming. I'm gonna take a sip even though Oh, it's so sweet. Um, I can't actually drink Thai iced tea mm, Boba is really good from Gong Tha. I'm not supposed to be drinking this because I found the other mini Here it is I'm not supposed to be drinking it simply because I have pre-diabetes and Thai iced tea usually comes with some kind of like condensed milky super sweet um, concentrate that is just not great for my blood sugar so I actually ordered a strawberry tea which I'll show in a minute but I wanted to show all the Thai iced tea colors here there we go here is the main gradient set there we go. Here they all are. And then they come with. Ooh, come on, work with me here. There we go. Come for my face. Um, they come with a boba colorway as an optional add on. Boop, boop. There you go. This is a nice, simple boba colorway. Um, so that is what I'm working on. Um, thanks to all my lovely Instagram friends, I have already secured a test knitter. Sorry, not a test knitter. I have secured a test knitter, but I have also secured a tech editor so that these socks can be fully edited and fully tested before I release them. Um, I think I'll be launching a website to sell them at as well as on Etsy and maybe Payhip. Um, I can't access Ravelry right now since I get migraines from New Rev. So please let me know um, where you would, where you usually purchase patterns if not on Ravelry. I'm still trying to research my options on where to sell. Uh, since I'm a brand new designer, I'm really excited about this. Ah, oh, just look at that. It looks even better on the foot. I'll try to include footage of it on my foot once it's done. So I'm gonna try to do that for you. Um, so that is my boba socks that I'm working on. This is the first sock and once the first sock is done, I'll send it off to tech editing and we hope to release this sock pattern sometime in late May, early June. And Jen will also be creating um, some kits for it. I'll also be offering a sample. Um, I'll be, a friend will be knitting up a sample for me in a more budget friendly yarn based on Ooh, this drink here. So this is not as pink as I hoped it would be. I'm gonna shake it up. We've got like this strawberry puree at the bottom. It's really settling. So my friend will be knitting up, my friend Phoebe will be knitting up a sample for me based on strawberry green milk tea, which is this drink today that I have here. So that's really exciting. Um, it's gonna have, the pattern will have both a fade option and a solid with contrast boba option. So those are two options for you to pursue if you'd like to knit this pattern. Um, definitely follow me on Instagram. That's probably where I'll put the tester call. And when I do have the tester call out, I'll probably also film an episode with finished socks just to show you. Um, so be on the lookout for that. So let's see, what else have I got here? Oh, so this set has already been spoken for um, because it is for the Knit Diverse Knit Along that I've been running over on Instagram. Uh, that is where all the knit along stuff is happening. So this one, I'll actually be dry, drawing the prize for this one in just a few hours and I'll be mailing it out. But I've got a few other prizes to show you, I think, at least one. Oh yes, I have one prize to show you. Um, Let's see. This will be one of next week's prizes, I think. Oh. Alexa, stop.
Okay, where was I? Um, we do have one more prize to show today. Um, I know that every episode of the podcast, I've been showing some acquisitions and prizes uh, for the Knit Diverse Knit Along. So here is, I think this is the only thing I haven't shown that's still a prize. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful skein of sock yarn. Um, this was donated kindly by Disobedient at Instagram. And this is from a local black woman owned dyeing company called Unlikely Fox Fibers. And I've never heard of them before, but now that I see this gorgeous speckle color, come on, focus for me. There we go. Now that I see it, I really want to check them out and try some of their colorways. So that's exciting. Um, there's not a lot of local dyers in LA, so um, I'm very excited to be able to give away two locally dyed prizes. So that's happening. Um, oh, one more thing about the Boba mini set. <laughs> I'm so scattered today, I'm sorry. Um, the Boba set will still be available all the way through the end of this week and ten dollars of every purchase will be donated by jen to red canary song um, which is an organization that fights for uh, massage parlor workers um, women and um, just generally people who are in sex work trade who don't normally get a lot of representation and it's kind of like a mutual aid collective organization I didn't explain that very well. I will link them below and you can check them out. They're a great organization. But uh, that we have raised over $200 so far with the Thai iced tea set. And I'm just so happy that we're able to support this wonderful organization. Thank you all to those who have already purchased. And if you haven't already purchased, please go and purchase a Thai iced tea gradient set. And very soon you'll be able to knit Thai iced tea themed socks designed by me using that set. So highly suggest you check that out. I'll put a direct link to the set below. Um, check it out and support Jen and support Red Canary Sock. So um, I think that's all I have for you today. I missed a work in progress. I have one more work in progress um, that I forgot to film earlier. I actually moved on to some other segments. So I'm just gonna go ahead and film that now. I have been knitting the Earth and Air sweater by James Watt for a while and it goes fast because it's knit on US 10 and a half needles. Um, if you're motivated and if you're in the mood to knit brioche stitch in two colors. But I have not been feeling motivated or interested in knitting brioche. So it's been kind of slow going for me. I finished the body. And I started the sleeve. And I also did the collar because I prefer to finish collars before I move on to sleeves so that I can see how it draped on the body once the collar is in. The materials for this I've talked about before, so um, you can check out the last podcast episode three for that. I'm not going to go on and on about it. They were kindly provided by Fancy Tiger Crafts um, for a blog post I'm writing for them. So that's what I've been knitting. So hopefully I'll finish it soon. And finally, I have a new acquisition and it's the Chao Gu Complete Interchangeable Needle Set. I got it in, oh, I forget what it's even called, but I'll put a link below to it. Um, it is the metal set and I'm really enjoying it. Here we go. Metal needles. It comes in like a complete set of a bunch of sizes from US 2 all the way to US 15. So I got the 4 inch complete, which I think makes up to 28 inch circulars. Um, because I didn't have a lot of metal needles in 16 inch circular and I felt I really needed them. Um, so I got this one to kind of bridge that gap and get those 20 inch projects in there. Um, I really love these needles. 
I don't love them as much as the Addy for the material. I've been kind of like a long-term exclusive Addy user for a while. Um, and I do find the Addy is more pleasant to knit with for the material and it makes a nice clean click um, instead of what this one does, which is here. I'll use the mic and I'll show you. Oh, worst. I do not like that sound, um, but I can knit so much faster with it, especially if I'm working a lace pattern because they are super sharp. They are way, way, way sharper than Addy's. So much sharper. So I think it's worth, it's a good trade-off to have that sound. <laughs> Um, I think these are surgical grade stainless steel and yeah, they come with needles, they come with the cables and you connect them with, you know, the drill with um, interchangeables. I have not owned that many interchangeable sets. The other set I have are the Leiky or Leaky, I don't know what they're called, pronounced as um, sets. They're okay. I don't love the cable on those and I knit really slow on wood, even coated wood, resin coated. So I ended up getting this Chogu set and I've already knit so many things with it. I think I knit all of this sweater um, until I ran into the trouble with the sleeves. I knit like 100 grams, 400 yards of the stuff, fingering weights, US size three needles in like three days. 3.25 millimeters is what that size is. <laughs> I'm trying to use all the different measurement um, conventions instead of just using the US based conventions. Um, where was I? Oh, so these do knit super fast. The lace was really easy to work on these. I really enjoy working with these needles and I highly recommend them. Um, very secure, really smooth drawing, just everything you need in an interchangeable situation. So that is that. So I think that is all I have for you today. Um, thank you so much for joining me here today on the Thoughtfully Made Fiber Podcast. Um, I really enjoyed sharing all the things that I have going on with you and I hope that you found it to be an inspiring and joyful episode. I certainly had a really good time making all of these things and sharing it with you. Um, so if you like that, do subscribe and I'll be back soon for another episode. I have other designs that I've been dreaming up that I can't share. I can't wait to share with you all. I also have some personal news that I hope to be able to share with you very soon. So there's lots of exciting and enjoyable things for me going on. So I hope you'll join me again. And for now, I'm going to take my Gongcha strawberry, uh, strawberry milk tea and go and enjoy the rest of my day with my family. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon.